Right. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and it is a Sabbath day. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us, for making this little ecclesia a very great place. We are those people who believe that the laws, statutes, and commands of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are good for all times. 
They are good for all families. They are good for all people. They are good for all nations. And they are good for you. And they are good for me. And it is because of these commandments that we have hope. We have a kingdom to come and we have some greatness. And this is what we're here to do is we're here to shout out the name of our Elohim Most High Yahuwah and his son, Yahushua. And we're, we're here to praise them and to give them all hope, all glory, all everything that we have to give them because they have given us a life. They have given us a path. They have given us a beautiful creation that we can live in. And how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. How are you doing? What's, what's, what's the shakes? What, you guys good? Yeah. Everyone at the table good? Yeah. Anyone? How, who do we got in here? Miss Nicole? Lots of people. We got the Grand. Our grandma's here. We got Carla, Emissary of Elohim, Zachariah and Rhiannon, Dredge Deplorable. Um, we have two new names that I haven't seen before. Arlene Louise and Bill Evans. Hi, Arlene. Hi, Bill. And also the Creole family. And the Creole family. Hi, everybody out there. Much love to everybody out there. Let's begin with a, a prayer and a little bit of glorification to our Creator. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you as your people. Father, we come before you as those who are seeking your Torah, as those who are seeking your Son and seeking your ways. Father, we are at the end of judgment time. We are at the end of captivity. And Father, we are coming out of her and we are asking that you will walk with us, that you will walk beside us in everything that we do. Father, you have bestowed the greatest gift to us with the Torah and your Son. And Father, we ask that you will not forget us, that you will take us to this kingdom to come, that we will be your people and that we can live these lives in your Torah, that we can live these lives in the righteousness of your Torah. And Father, please bless those who are listening today. Father, there's a lot of injuries. There's a lot of people that have problems. Father, I ask that you will work with them, that you will seek us as we seek you, that you will help those who are needing help. And Father, we thank you for dwelling with us. We thank you for giving us a a beautiful land and a beautiful world that we can all dwell in from all across the world and for giving us these friends and family. And Father, you're just a gracious creator. More than anything, Father, we thank you for your son and his sacrifice and his, his ability to walk this Torah perfectly where we cannot. Father, we have an example and we have the Torah. There's nothing more important than this. Father, I ask that our hearts are softened our tongues are softened, our ears are open, and we're able to see the truth of the Torah and that, that those who are able to listen to this message are able to see your ways and see your kingdom. And as it comes to fruition, Father, please bless these people. We thank you for everything. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. So let us get into a Shema. And this is a Deuteronomy 6. And hear, O Yashrael. For those who do not know who Yashrael is, Mr. Eli, will you please tell me who Yashrael is? Slowly and to the microphone, my friend. It is everyone who keeps the commands of Yahuwah. At we are Yashrael, everyone who keeps the commands is. Caden, what kind of commands are we talking about? If somebody wanted to be the house of Yashrael or the house of Yahuda, how does that look? What exactly does that look like? Because we've been told throughout generations that all we have to do is raise our hand when we're eight years old or when we understand it and we can accept, we can call the name of Jesus into our hearts and we're saved for all eternity. And there's, there's once saved, always saved. Now that's what we've been told. And that's what we, a lot of us have grown up into. How is that different from what the scriptures say, Kate? Because we are told that we need to follow these commandments to show that we are the people of Yashrael. We would follow the original commands we were given. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those were the commands where Yahuwah said, you will follow these commands and you will be my people and I will be your Elohim and I will make a covenant between you and I will bless you. Yeah, and today we're actually, in the reading today, we're actually going to be reading about that little covenant that we're talking about, the first covenant that we have. This is the begin. This is called the Shema. And this is something very, very important. And if there's anything that anyone gets from any of these lessons out there, this is very important right here. Let's begin. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah is one and you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might and these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart and you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Jaden, what do you think of that? 
I think that's a great thing that we need to teach our children, that we need to have those, that we have the commands of this wherever we go, that we remember the commands. If you guys ever have children, will you teach your children the commands? Yes. Why wouldn't you? Um, you wouldn't teach them because you were a pagan? You were a... <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not, once you know the Torah, there's not a lot of reasons to not teach people, not tell them, unless you know it and you hate Yah, or you know it and you just want to live in demonology. There's, there's only a few reasons why you would not want to teach the Torah. What would happen to kids that don't have Torah? What, what becomes of them? Well, they would become wild, they'd become rebellious, they would basically become what you see the world, right? You see a kid and you know that something is bad, there's something wrong. Rebels, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was going with on that. And for those who have never um, hung around with us before, um, my apologies first and foremost for the dogs. Um, we definitely have a lot of dogs here and um, they will make noise. There's 10 pit bulls and sometimes they do get noisy. And we are out of rainy season here, which means now we are in, um, it's not hurricane season, but it's the wind now blows for about four or five months, hardcore. So when you guys hear our house and the roof blowing off, it's okay, we're, we're still here, um, hopefully. All right, so this takes us into something um, that we do every single week. And we go through these and I have a little something cool at the end of this I'm going to do that no one here in this family actually knows about. They might have a uh, slight clue because they saw my little program that I had. But we're going to go through this first and foremost and then we're going to do something a little cool that we haven't done before. And when we go over this, yes Eli? Did you do the month? I didn't do the month. Thank you Eli. Um, when we go over these, let's remember them and let's try to memorize them and let's try to write them on our hearts, minds, and souls. Today is our, it is the ninth month on our creator's calendar. It makes it the seventh day and here we are, yo. Okay, and it is the 30th day on the creator's calendar. It is the 24th day on the Babylonian Gregorian calendar. That makes tonight a Christmas Eve and for those celebrating Christmas Eve, I will absolutely not wish you Merry Christmas. I will absolutely not wish you uh, Happy New Year or any of that. It is all pagan. It is stuff that we are told to stay away from. Um, commandment number five, 95 that we're talking about today talks about being separated from the world in every way, shape, and form. Keeping Christmas, keeping these holidays, keeping these pagan holidays, this is not a part of the kingdom to come. If you think that you're, it's okay and that you're only celebrating Christmas because... Um, you feel that's where the Messiah was born. If you are doing something that you will be embarrassed about doing in the presence of Messiah Yahushua or Jesus the Christ, as everyone says, then we shouldn't be doing it. So if you think that you're going to be on your knees in front of a tree that is Nimrod's phallus with gifts, and you think you're going to be celebrating our Messiah with him standing right there, you will be embarrassed. That's not what this is about. And so our walk, our kingdom walk that we are walking is a walk to avoid these pagan holidays. We should not be celebrating this. Kate, what do you uh, got? If you do want to do something festive tonight, you should blow your shofar. Oh. Tonight is the new moon. You should be celebrating the, the new moon. Yep, new moon is tonight. Absolutely blow your shofars tonight. And that is something we should absolutely be doing. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate that. All right, so let us go into our commandments. And let us see real quick. Okay, um, shall we start? Anything yep. going on in the chat room, Ms. Nicole? Um, we have a couple new people that joined in. We have Judith uh, Carswell. Hi, Judith. And also Jim Canyon Productions. Hi, Jim. Jim and Judith and everybody new. Thank you guys very, very much for hanging out. Um, we hope you guys enjoy this. Now, what we're going to be going over real quick, and hopefully we don't lose you guys on this, because some people do just, they start hearing these commandments and they will drift away. But I assure you and I promise you that every single commandment in this list will apply to you and will, will enhance your life. It will make it for the best. All right, let us begin, gentlemen, and I will start with being fruitful and multiplying. Kid. Replenish the earth. Subdue it, have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The herb bearing every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk me for me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenants, laws, statutes, and commandments. 53 times, my friends. This commandment is in here 53 times. The largest, by far, commandment in all of scriptures is commandment number 11, which is, tells us over 53 times that we need to guard the covenants, laws, and statutes. 
Now, if we take the statutes and laws and we say they're on the cross or they don't apply to us or they're, they're nailed to the cross, that is not guarding the law, covenant laws. I rest assured that those laws, statutes, and commandments that people think are gone are not gone. In fact, they apply to us today and forever. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and the Ibram. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. And here we are. Honor your parents. Ah. Uh, do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from a rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall extort it five times. Yahoo is lost for the criminals. You shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifices to other Elohim. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use anointing oil on a normal person, and do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corn of your field, or you shall not clean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your be beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do, do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Homer keep, count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Terah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shem Niyat If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's, an your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Wear zitzits on the four corners of your garments. The laws of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's law of inheritance. Torah keeping your oath to Yahuwah. When in the land, the laws of a murder and the victim's family. Notice how it has a little uh, star by the side of it. Those are things you should only do in the land because if you were to go and stone someone's family or if you were going to kill someone for being a witch, wizard, or a medium, you would get in a lot of trouble in today's society because they are not under the reign of Yah. You'd probably not want to stone the, somebody's family either, but I mean, unless they were like, you know. Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. We, we get to that. Right, okay. Continue on. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hands and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. 
do not do what is right in your own eyes. Now, why, why do you suppose it's, it's a good idea not to do what's right in your own eyes? Because, let's say Christmas, or let's say the golden calf. They thought that was good in their eyes. They thought that was Yahuwah. And they, a lot of them ended up dead. A lot of them ended up separated from Yah after that moment. And who knows what happened to him after that. I mean, Aaron, I'm sure, didn't walk away and skate from that either after making that. I mean, that was right in their own eyes, and it turned out to be a huge curse. Yeah, you know, and and that's one thing. I just got done talking to my mother yesterday, and, you know, she is a diehard Christian woman, and um, that's that's hardcore, right? When you you guys know what that means, it means you're, you're... lawless you're you're capable of doing whatever it is you want to do because it is right in your own eyes but you know i i try to tell her you know this it's the saturnalia you know the 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 holiday she is celebrating right now started off with people being raped and beat up and days of lawlessness saturnalia it was just a it was a very evil time if they, you know, and she's like, well, and she laughed when I told her about that. She's like, ha And I said, well, mom, that that's what you're celebrating. This is all the time. You know, the seven days that you're all dealing with all this, uh, the Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the exact same thing, folks. Hanukkah is a doctrine of men that is not given to us in a commandment. You guys, we're going through the commandments right now. If there was a feast of Hanukkah, it would say it right here. Celebrate the feast of Hanukkah. For seven days, you should give gifts or something of the sort, something of the sort, right? It doesn't have it. Even in John 10, when Messiah Yahushua was walking about in the porch of Shalom's place, they were celebrating it. He wasn't celebrating it. It had nothing to do with him. He doesn't say to do it. And our creator says not to do it. So we got to be very, very careful. All right, 127. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Kill the false prophets. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are your family members. If a city is turned away from Yahuwah, burn the city and kill all inhabitants. There's the, there's the families you're trying to kill, kids. Do not make Oops. any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of a seven-year lease. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Right, so it, right here, where it says guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar, if we were told to keep Hanukkah or Christmas, you would have it. We would have it. There would be 175 commands instead of 174, and there's no such thing in there. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. Any man or woman that is in wicked things in your gates, they shall be taken out and stoned. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophet has to do Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. Sorry, Cade. The law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that they only lived on, you must put a railing around it. Laws for the accuser and the accused in purity of relationships. If a man has a relationship with an engaged woman, both should be killed. If an engaged woman is raped, she is not charged with a crime, but the man shall die. If a man forces himself upon an undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. You may eat from your neighbors in your grain, but you may not take it out of the field. Law of divorce. Newly married man should stay at home for one year to be with his wife. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall you put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. You cannot give a man more than forty stripes for his judgment of his wickedness. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. If a woman comes to finish her man and grabs the other man's rights, you shall cut off her hand. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. Okay, so, Before what do we got? Before you go any further. Let's do it. What do you um, got, Ms. Katrina, I don't know how you say her last name, Bo Kutcha. She says, your teaching is hatred and murder in the name of Yahuwah. Great. My teaching is murder? Your teaching is hatred and murder in the name of Yahuwah. Great. 
But we're not teaching that. We're just yeah. telling you what the commandments well, are. Well, that's that's going to be people that don't understand the law, statutes, and commands. They're going to they're going to have problems like this. And um, I'm sorry, get my gal, uh, whoever you are, what's your name, Katrina? Katrina. Katrina. This, these are not um, hatred, right? And so people, you know, that, I guess that would be the indoctrination of, of Christian religion is that you think that the laws of our creator are, are evil. What, I guess, is she still around? Is, is what, what laws, what, what part of the hatred is there? Uh, you know, I don't have... Go ahead, Kate. I think more than anything, we have most love in there, right? We're told to love our brother, we're told to hate our brother, we're told to oppress the poor, we're told to love the poor, the needy, the fatherless, the widows, right? We're told to take care of them. Yeshua specifically called the Pharisees out for just not doing those things, for attacking the widows, hurting the people that are broken. We're told to love all those people. If anything, there's more love in this than anything else. And the, here's the thing, is the people, I, I guess when you're talking about, like, stoning people that are... Oh, you know, not following the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator. We're talking about a land that is a holy land. We're talking about when we are returned to the land of Yisrael. When we go there, these are the commands that were given to us years and years ago. We wouldn't want to have evil in the lands. We wouldn't want to have people coming and teaching us. We wouldn't want Jehovah's Witnesses at the door. We unfortunately we would not want Christians coming and teaching us things of that nature because it goes contrary to what the Bible says. So unfortunately, even if you feel that there's hate in this, there's nothing but love from our Creator. Go ahead. And where it comes to stoning, let's say a kidnapper or a rapist, right? Those people should not belong in the land. Those people are evil people doing terrible things to other people. That's hatred in itself. Getting rid of those people would be love for the other people that are getting abused, getting hurt. Yeah, and you know, we live in a society right now where people... We'll go to prison for seven years, and that's it. That's all that ever happens for murder, right? And so they, they murder somebody, they go to the prison for seven years. If we were doing things according to our creator, the people that murdered somebody would be killed. That's the way it would. We wouldn't allow murders in the, the land. We wouldn't allow pedophiles in the land. We wouldn't allow people that are outside of covenants in the land. And this is a guidebook for holiness. I don't think there's a hatred thing here, and... Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Is there anything more? Emissary of Elohim says, don't break the law and you don't have to worry about being killed for your crime. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is every one of these here is something that we've done evil things to deserve a punishment. And so, you know, maybe she has more, but, you know, let's let's go to the next thing on this. And maybe, maybe somebody else will, will continue on in that. Now, I'm going to go into a real quick, my handy dandy random number generator. Yay. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do with this uh, handy dandy random number generator is I have it between one and 174. Oh boy. I'm gonna click it, generate, ready? Drum roll. 107, all right, now let's go back here. Now, we're gonna go into this, I believe, and we're going to go here, and we're gonna go to here, and right here, okay. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. All right, so for whatever reason, we are here, and this is the commandment we are going to look over today. Commandment 107, guys, is um, we did, I don't know, did we draw lots? Is that how you draw lots, a random number generator or something? Uh, I, maybe. Okay, let's talk about this real quick. Commandment 107 is this. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. And you shall speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, you shall give his inheritance unto his father's brother. And if his father have no brethren, you shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it, it shall be unto the children of Yashrael a statute of judgment as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Numbers 27, 8, and 11. Okay. For whatever reason, we're going to do this, and every week we won't do 107 again. We're going to do random numbers until it's done. Let's talk about this real quick. Commandment 107, right? So what do we have here? Did you did you guys listen up on this? Yeah. So okay. the backstory, the original backstory to this is that there were four daughters of a man, and he died in his own sin in the wilderness. He died as one of the people that were not ever going to make it into the promised land because he upset Yah. Was it, was it? Yeah, it was, he I thought he, he died for different reasons. Yeah, he was Korah. He was, during he Korah. was not with Korah, but he was. But he died in his own sin. Right, but he people. wasn't evil against Yah. Right. right, he was. He was just his own person that died in the wilderness of the generation that was not allowed in Israel. So they went before Moses and they went before Eleazar, the the priest at the time after Aaron had died, and they said, 
we don't have any brothers to receive the inheritance. Why should we be left out of the inheritance as well? And they brought it before Yah. They, they asked. They, they were able to speak up and ask Yah for this thing to be changed. That not only the sons get it, but as well the daughters, the nearest relative. And Yah made that law just for them, just because they asked for the thing, which shows the power of asking Yah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And does this is this a good commandment or is it a bad commandment? What, what do you I guys think make of this commandment? Commandment. So it, people, people can get their inheritance. It helps you don't get your stuff poached, right? If like right. you have a family member that's really distant, and they just come take all your stuff because they somehow can do some of the legal paperwork as you can do nowadays. Here, back in the day, you would say, no, this is the nearest relative. This person gets this person's inheritance. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So do we have anything else? She wrote back and said, okay, sorry. I know the love of the Lord Jesus. Search the face of the Lord and he will straighten our path. Right. And, you know, that's, sis, um, first of all, I got nothing but love for you and I have nothing but love for everybody out there. And we, the love of Messiah Yahushua is the greatest love of all, right? There is no greater individual that ever came who was sent to do it and he did it and he did it right and he did it perfectly. When we look at the sacrifice of Messiah Yahushua or Jesus the Christ, as, as people say, there were no J's in Hebrew. He had to die because we were unable to stay on the right path. When people say that we cannot keep the Torah of our creator, that is incorrect. We can keep the Torah. It is not bondage. It is not hard. And when we read the Torah, see, we have to separate Messiah from his father in ways because Messiah Yahushua came and did the will of his father. When, we, when he says, who are you doing these things? I mean, who sent you to do these things, right? Everything that he says, the will of him is the will of his father. His father gave us these commandments. And when we look at the commandments, and I mean, let's just, let's look at some of these other ones right here. Um, let's look at, uh, I don't know, just for, go up to, let's, let's go right here. This is a commandment right here, right? Commandment 103. It's just a simple one I just picked out of nowhere. It says, confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. To break that command right there, we would have to, basically we trespass against somebody. What we do is we violate them or we hurt them or we, we steal and we do something that trespasses against them and we, we leave them in that state, right? Every single one of these commandments is about love right here, right? If you are the person who got trespassed against and there was nobody to help you out here, you're just going to get trespassed against. But we have a law for this and there is a thing that we should do, right? If we are evil to our neighbor, if we don't love them, every single one of these laws, statutes and commands are about love, right? If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. You know, where where is that? Where is the hate? If we're talking about taking people that are in sodomy or the people that have are uh, pedophiles, right? The laws of our creator are that you would take those people and you would take them outside of the city gates and that you would end the evil in your sight. There wouldn't be this kind of evil. And if we allow evil in our midst, if we allow great evil, it just flourishes. Then pretty soon everybody's into this and we have to nip this and the road that we are looking for is called a kingdom road there you know the by every christian out there is looking and waiting for a rapture but when we read the bible talks about a kingdom coming about mount zion about a a world that we are going to be in where our messiah reigns when he's reigning every one of these rules that we're talking about right now will have been initiated there won't be sodomites in the kingdom to come there will not be evil. You won't have murders. You're not going to have pedophiles. The people that hurt, all of these people are not going to exist. Now, if you're saying this is not in love, where are these people going to go? Every one of these evil people are going to hell and they have zero chance of ever getting out of that. Does she have anything else on that? Go ahead. Let's read. What do you got? No, Jesus translates the Lord God most high in his love for you. Then she also put, there's no law in his love, please. See, and that's, you know, I, I'm not going to dwell too long on this because those who are on this channel, you guys know, we just read through the laws, statutes, and commands where every single thing in there is about love. It's about loving your neighbor It's and all of this stuff. And if you want to live in a world that is full of evil, 
I guess just continue on where everyone's going here. And she says, your Lord Jesus broke all the burden and the yoke of the law for he loved you. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, again, those are what you can say and those are what you can do, but that's, that's, doesn't, that's not scriptural stuff, right? That is not, it never says that it's only Messiah Yahushua and nobody else. And if you, if you reject the laws, statutes, and commands, Matthew 7 clearly says you will be rejected. In fact, let us uh, let me let me jump up real quick. Let's let's look at this real quick. I think this is a valid discussion. I think this is a point we need to do. Let's look at this real quick. Matthew seven. Now, when we look at Matthew seven, and when we look at what our Messiah was talking about right here, there's some scary stuff right here. Iniquity is Torah lessness. Iniquity is sin. If you are a sinner, if you are okay with sin, if you are, well, Jesus is love and it's all about love, it's all about this, right? That is not the message of Messiah Yahushua. This is what Messiah Yahushua, Jesus the Christ says. Not everyone that says to me, Adonai, Adonai, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Now, if we don't go any further beyond that, Right there, it says that whoever is doing the will of my father, if you don't know what the will of his father is, that's a problem. The will of his father is the Torah. It's the 174 commandments that we just went over. What happens to those who do not keep the Torah? Well, you know, this is the Christian people right here, right? Many will say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name cast out devils? and in your name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. It says, basically, if you are not keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, you will be told to depart from our Messiah. And those are not words you want to hear. So this is the path that everyone has to make. You either have to choose a lifestyle of righteousness and keeping the laws, statutes, and commands. And if you believe that there's a taboo that these are evil and that our creator has created evil things, what 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 accounting do you have for evil? What are you supposed to do? Do you want to lock people up in jail and do what we do in Babylon right now? No, there's no accountability for anything anywhere. So anyway, let's continue on. Much love to you, sis. Um, the Torah is the way forward. It will always be the way forward, it is the right way forward and um that's what we will keep for my family and i for sure okay so today we are in um genesis 17 thank you guys very very much our family who's hanging out there with us all all of this and so one thing i do want to note again is we are reading from the targums simply for extracurricular stuff i want to make note that if we the 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 scriptures that we have right here at the very bottom i consider these Perfect, not perfect, but as good as they get. This is the old Hallelujah scriptures that is now the Yahoo scriptures. It's whatever scriptures. Is, it's it's just a very good translation. If it doesn't link completely at the bottom, then let's just keep it and add it for extracurricular stuff. And so that's what we're trying to get into. And I had another warning from another friend of ours who said just to be careful with the targums. And so I do want us to be very very careful because I don't want us to lead anyone astray. Okay, is everyone ready? Yep. Anything else going on in the chat room? Nope, everybody was just giving their, their opinion on that, too, and they're all, you know, because we were all in this family together, so they kind of yeah, said the same thing. So, yeah, like Glenn says, unfortunately, people have been led by wolves in sheep's clothing and don't fully understand scripture. Emissary of Elohim says, um, consider this, if you are on death row and get a pardon from the gover governor, you are free, right? But then if you go out and commit murder, you were back on death row. Yeah, you know, it, it's a lot like, you know, running running the, the, the stop sign, right? You run the stop sign, nothing happens. Sometimes you might get a ticket, right? You might get a ticket, but when you pay the ticket, you can't just run that stop sign over and over. It, it does not give you a license to blow through the stop sign. Because what happens, right? When you blow through a stop sign, well, you might end up dead, right? There's reasons for rules. There's reasons for regulations. And our creator has given us perfect regulations and beautiful things that we can call our laws that we can we can bind to our hearts and eyes and, and keep them on our house and doorposts and they're just beautiful things so hopefully you guys don't reject them those um you know if eyes to see and ears to hear know exactly what i'm saying okay here it is 
You guys ready? Yep. Yep. And it came to be when Abram was 99 years old that Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be perfect. And I give my covenant between me and you and shall greatly increase you. And Abram fell on his face and Elohim spoke with him saying, as for me, look, my covenant is with you and you shall become a father of many nations. And no longer is your name called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham because I shall make you a father of many nations. And I shall make you bear fruit exceedingly and make nations of you and sovereigns shall come from you. And I shall establish my covenant between me and you and your seed after you and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be Elohim to you and your seed after you. Okay, so we're gonna go to the targets at the top, but I wanna talk about this first, gentlemen. Jade, okay, you stay paying attention here? Okay, tell me what we just read. We were told that there's going to be a covenant that we are going What is to, a covenant? A covenant is a bond. It's like a contract. It's like a it's like something. a pact between the two people. It's like your lease agreement rental for your house, right? The lease agreement for your house, wherever your house is or your whatever it is, it says that you owe this much money at this time. This is the residence that the this is the property of the residence. Um, you have to pay for garbage, water, sewer, or it says that we pay for water, garbage, sewer, that kind of stuff, right? And at the, it just basically lines stuff up. It says you cannot, uh, you know, basically start like a junkyard in the house, right? You can't rip the carpets up and, and shred the walls and, uh, you know, tack stuff into the walls. That's what it says. At the end of it, you sign your name and you, you agree to this. And when you agree to this, if you go and start tearing the walls down or start making noise or start like ripping the plumbing out of the house, right? The guy's gonna come and say, hey, you broke the agreement, get out. That's the way it is. And that is the way it is with our creator. So this agreement that we have, Kate, go on. This is, agreement is that you, the commands will be here, you will follow them and I'm going to increase you among the earth. You're going to have more than the stars, you're going to have more than the sand, more than you can count. Yeah, and so what it, the covenant says, I will be your Elohim and you will be my people, essentially, right? How does one, again, how do, how do we do this? By We become his people by following the commands. When we enter into the commands, we become part of Yashrael, we become part of that little land. It's what people consider grafted in. That's what grafted in is. We are outsiders, we don't know where we're from, we don't know our bloodline from the original Yashrael. So by us following the commands, we are the strangers, but we become Hebrews, we become Yashrael by entering into the commands and Elohim becomes the head over us. Right, absolutely. Okay, all right, let's continue on. And Abram was the son of 90 and nine years. And Yahuwah, and we're at the top guys, I'm sorry about that. And Abram was the son of 90 and nine years. And Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai, serve before me and be perfect in thy flesh. And I will set my covenant between my word and thee and will multiply thee very greatly. And because Abram was not circumcised, he was not able to stand, but he bowed himself before upon his face and Yahuwah spake with him saying, behold, I have confirmed or divided my covenant with thee and thou shalt be the father of many peoples and thy name shall be no more called Abram, but Abraham shall be thy name because to be the father of a great multitude of peoples have I appointed thee and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and will set thee for congregations and kings ruling over peoples shall come forth from thee. And I have established my covenant between my word and thee and thy sons after thee in thy generations for an everlasting covenant to be an Elohim to thee and to thy sons after thee. Okay, so this is, we had a little bit different right here in this, right? Um, he says, I will set my word. Does he say, I will set my word? He said, I'll establish my covenant between you, me and your seed. And yeah, a lot of what we get in the Targums is when, when our creator says my word, it's, it's what he's saying, right? It's, it's the Torah. It's how he says it. It's, it's his word. Okay, so let's continue on into verse... Are we in eight down here, guys? We are in... Yeah. Eight. Okay. And I shall give to you and your seed after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession. And I shall be their Elohim. And Elohim said to Abraham, As for you, guard my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you guard between me and you, and your seed after you. Every male child among you is to be circumcised, 
Okay, I'm going to stop right here because I think this is a very interesting note because we have a commandment that we need to circumcise our children at eight days old. This is the reason why, right? We're learning about the covenant, right? There is a physical marking upon male children that are in covenant with our creator. The thing is, like North America nowadays, everybody circumcises their children. It's like, it's like kind of, a, I don't know if the entire world does it. All I have experience is North America. I don't know anything about South America, honestly. But I do know that it's just, it, it is what it is. And they do it, I think they, I don't think they do it eight days. How long, when do the boys do it? Like three days? Two or three days. Well. Two or three days. So you're supposed to have your child circumcised on the eighth day. This is part of the covenant. Many people are, well, this is, um, this is evil or you shouldn't be doing this. This is like bloodlust to the kids or things of that nature. People don't understand the ways our creator wants us to be. If he wants us to look a little different than the rest of the world to begin this covenant walk, this is what he is saying. And so when he talks about this, this is a very important thing. This is the beginning of that, right? Keep my laws, statutes, and commands. And then he goes on to say, every male child among you is to be circumcised. Okay, verse 11. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall become a sign of the covenant between me and you. And a son of eight days is circumcised by you, every male child in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with silver from any foreigner who is not of your seed. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your silver has to be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And an uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, his life shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Okay. Thoughts, anyone? Anyone have anything? Um, here again, we get to see that outsiders are part of this covenant as well. It does not matter if they were born in the house or if they were bought, right, as a slave, as a servant, whatever yep. it was. They all had to be part of the covenant. A absolutely. And, you know, that's that's something that everyone... You know, we have a, a, a state of Israel today, the, the modern state of Israel, and they believe that you have to be a bloodline. They believe that you have to be some sort of people that is, you know, outside or right into their group. And that is absolutely not true. When we see, um, even in the story of when the Israelites are leaving Mitzrayim, there are 600,000 plus slaves along with them. And all they had to do was to keep the law, statutes, and commands of our creator, and you can join into this. So it is not a bloodline thing. It is not a skin color thing. There is none of that at all. And when Cade was talking about that the, the circumcision, even an uncircumcised male child um, who is not of your flesh or who is a slave, when it talks about there is one Torah for the, for the stranger and one for the Hebrew people, the Ibrahim, that is what that means. It does not matter where you are at in this world. It matters that you can get these laws, statutes, and commands. It, 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 all you got to do is follow them. All you have to do is get right in the eyes of our creator. This does not take away from the sacrifice of Messiah Yahushua. And that is what the Christians will, right out of the gate, everyone's like, well, it's all about Jesus, 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 Jesus. And they, they, they don't realize that the problem was that we had to have our Messiah Yahushua because we broke these commandments and we were unfaithful to our creator to begin with. And if we continue on breaking commandments after we have resolved our sin, we are just living in sin and it's, it's very wrong. Okay. You got anything, Mystical? Um, no, we're still, they're still discussing Katrina. Katrina? Yeah, because she popped in another thing up here. So okay, let's just, let, yeah, let's continue on. Um, hopefully, Yah will give her, Katrina, our dear sis, the eyes to see and the ears to hear, and hopefully her heart will be softened to this. And dear sis, if you're still listening in on this, simply read. Read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and read it as a love letter from our Creator to yourself. That's all you have to do, because we are in so much indoctrination that we don't know what to believe because we have never read these words for ourselves. So it's time to put away the pulpits. It's time to put away the 501c3 churches. It is time to get with the scriptures and scriptures only. And that is our guide. And okay. there's no hate. We love. Yeah, there's no hate. It's all love. Yeah, there's no hate. Just because we have to take somebody out who's a murderer and pick up rocks and kill them or do something of the sort, that shows love for our creator. That is what our creator has told us to do. I'm not advocating that we should go murder people. I'm not advocating we should go hurt people. I'm not advocating any of this. 
if you break the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, then we need to follow through with what the judgments are. And some of these we can't do because we are not in the modern state. We're not in Israel. We're not in the promised land, but we hopefully will be there one day. Okay, let's go back. We're at the Targums at the top. Much love to everybody out there. I love these conversations. This is amazing. Okay, and starting at the top. And I will give to thee and to thy sons after thee the land of thy habitation and all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be to them Elah. And Yahuwah said to Abraham, and thou shalt observe my covenant, thou and thy sons after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, that you shall observe between my word and you, and your sons after you. Every male of you being circumcised, though he have not a father to circumcise him, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between my word and you. And the son of eight days shall be circumcised among you, every male in your generations, from him who is brought up in your house or bought with your silver unto every son of the peoples who is not of you. He who is circumcised shall circumcise him who is brought up among you or brought with your, bought with your silver. And it shall be my covenant in your flesh for a covenant forever. And the uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, unless he have someone to circumcise him, that man shall be cut off from his people. He hath made my covenant to pass away. Okay, and I got the flag from Eli that that's the end. Okay, um, there's a little different stuff here, right? Yeah. So what do we make of this right here? Um, this sounds almost Jewish. Yeah, so you need someone to circumcise you? It sounds almost Jewish because... I mean, Abraham didn't have anybody to... Cir I mean, did he circumcise himself? He probably I, would have I, had I, to. I would have assumed so. That would be quite the ordeal. Um, because this... I mean, ha this doesn't make any sense here. There are rules that they put. But I guess you wouldn't have an uncircumcised male circumcised. I mean, the, that just wouldn't... I guess that wouldn't be happening. So maybe, maybe we're off on that one. Okay. All right, let's continue on. Where are we at on the other one? You're uh, 15. 15. And Elohim said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife... Do not call her name Sarai, for Sarah is her name. So an I went to an H. There we go. And I shall Baruch her and also give her a son, give you a son by her. And I shall Barak her and she shall become nations. Sovereigns of people are to be from her. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, is a child born to a man who is 100 years old or Sarah who is 99 years old? 90 years old. 90 years old. To bear a child. Thanks, Eli. I did the same thing when we were proofing it. Did you? Uh -huh. 90. I don't know why. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. So, thoughts? Anyone? This guy's 100 years old. His wife's 99 years old. Uh, 90. 90. Abraham uh, kind of stumbling in his faith. He, he gets better over time. He's getting better Is he with stumbling it. because he laughs in his... It, it, uh, he's, he's not believing that he's going to have a kid. He has a problem with his disbelief, right? He's like, I'm too old for this. She's too old for this. It's not going to happen. Right. But in those ages, in that kind of an age that would be kind of impossible, right? I mean, you're, you're not going to have... It doesn't happen. Right, and so, I mean, there's a reason that he would, like, laugh at this, right? I mean, it, when you get old, you just don't function like you do in any way, shape, or form. Okay, 18. And Abraham said to Elohim, O oh, let Yishmael live before you. And Elohim said, No, Sarah, your wife, is truly bearing a son to you, and you shall call his name Yitzhak. And I shall establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and his seed after him. Okay, the quick question. What do you guys think? I mean, so our creator knows the names. He knows who's coming forward. Uh, you know, do we, ex do you guys think, I mean, do we exist prior to this? Is this, is this our first existence? Do we have a soul? How did this come to existence? Did our right. soul break forth the second that, that we're here on this earth? Or, I mean, it seems like our creator knows us prior to any of this, or I mean, at least he can tell the future and he knows what we will become, but it's almost like there's a plan. And remember when you're reading, I think, was it um, the words, the wisdom of Solomon or the other one where it says wisdom was given to people in their, in the bosom of their mother, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like it's our, our creator knows us prior to this or has these plans ready for us prior to all of this. And, and I don't know. Okay. Eli, where are we at here? Uh, you are 20? Uh, okay. Yeah. And as for Yishmael, I have heard you. See, I shall greatly barak him and shall make him bear fruit and greatly increase him. He is to bring forth 12 princes 
and shall make him a great nation. But my covenant I establish with Yitchak, whom Sarah is to bear to you at this appointed time next year. And when he had ended speaking with him, Elohim went up from Abraham. Okay, now we are back up into the Targums. And Yahuwah said to Abraham, the name of Sarah, thy wife, shall be no more called Sarah, for Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless in her body and will also give from her son to thee. And I will bless him and he shall be for assemblies and kings ruling over nations shall be from her. And Abraham fell on his face and wondered and said in his heart, shall the son of a hundred years have progeny and Sarah, the daughter of 99 years bear a child. Okay, and then the other translation of this is, and Abraham bowed upon his face and wondered. Okay, so we'll continue on. And Abraham said before Yahuwah, may not Ishmael be established and serve before thee? And Yahuwah said, in truth, thy wife shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishyak, Izhak, is how they have it, I-Z-H-A-K, Izhak. And with him, I will confirm my covenant for an everlasting covenant to his sons after him. And concerning Yishmael, I have heard thy prayer. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will spread him abroad and multiply him very greatly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will give him to be a great people. But my covenant will I establish with Ishyak, whom Sarah shall bear to thee at this time in the year after. And he ceased speaking with him, and the glory of Yahuwah ascended from Abraham. Okay. All right. So 22? 23. Okay. And 23. And Abraham took Yishmael, his son, and all those born in his house, and all those bought with his silver, and every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of the foreskins the, that same day, as Elohim told him. Now, this is, it, it's simply one verse here, but this thing is going to be a huge thing, especially to people that have no idea what in the world you are going to be doing, that this is going to happen, right? So this was quite the day, and I would have to say it's quite the day of pain. Um, Abraham was 99 years old when this happened, right? You think uh, he just like, he got all the males together and was like, all right, guys, this is what we got to do. Um, I don't know how that went down. I don't know if he or had somebody else circumcise himself, and then he went with everything. But you're not going to feel like circumcising anything once you're circumcised. You're not going to feel like doing much of it. So probably laying down for a while, like a long while. Um, it's not going to be happening. It's not going to be a gloriful day. Okay, it was 24. And Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Yishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Now, this is probably why he wanted to done eight days old so we none of us remember any of this madness. Right, and it's not madness. I'm saying it's madness. I'm just saying that there is um, there's blood. Right? Doing it like nine years old is madness. That's ninety nine years that's, old. That's painful. That's stuff you're not gonna forget. Yeah, you definitely won't forget that. But it's it is um, it's Yah's commands, and so we we got to keep them there. Okay, twenty six. Um, Abraham and his son Yishmael were circumcised that same day. So Pa and son had a very bad evening. Okay, end day. And all the men of his house, born in the house or bought with silver from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. So, and you know, this is going to be really crazy. If you were a slave from some other country that never, ever saw anything like this, and all of a sudden you're here, all right, line up, everyone. Um, things are happening. And there it went. Okay, so where, where are we at, Eli? Look up. Yep. All right, we'll finish up with the targums up here. We are almost done, everybody. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all brought up in his house and all bought with money every male among the household people of Abraham, and he circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same day in which Yahuwah spake with him. And Abraham was the son of 90 and nine years when he circumcised the flesh of his foreskin. In the same day, in the 14th year, was Abraham circumcised in Ishmael his son. And every man in his house, the house trained and the purchased with money of the sons of the people was circumcised with him. Okay, now, um, I guess this leads to I, the, the commandment that we have is that we need to circumcise every child at eight days old, right? So we circumcise them at eight days old. If you are okay with the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator being gone, then this would be gone as well. You would have no need to circumcise your children because there, it, it just wouldn't be. Um, people live uncircumcised all the time. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to have, affect them at all. So this is where we have to decide, are the laws, statutes, and commands what we want to follow? And for myself and my family, they are absolutely what we want to follow because nothing else makes any sense. 
the the whole wishy-washy warm warm washing of religions and guys there's 65,000 plus religions 65,000 other religions that do not keep the laws statutes and commands of our creator if you have a thing called a religion and they've tacked a name on top of it the name on top of that simply tells you that you have a doctrine there is a doctrine and a tradition that you follow them every church has their what they believe how they believe it what they believe and it is it's that's what you fall under but it goes against the laws statutes and commands if you are with any organization or if you're with any group of people and the Torah, the laws of our creator are not the number one priority, then the priorities are messed up. If you want to have only Messiah Yahushua, but you don't want to have the Torah, Matthew 7 says that we will be told to depart from him. Many other places, he goes on to tell us that iniquity is not right. And if we are simply just saying oh our father please forgive me for my sins and then you go out and you recommit the sin you're not learning anything you're still in sin you're still in bondage you are still a slave to the devil to hasatan that is who your daddy is if you are living in sin so this is why it is very important that we don't look at these as evil things that we don't look at them other than anything other than what our creator has given to us to keep us and to sustain our life all right, I think that's it. Anyone else have anything out there? Uh, oh, let's, yeah, so that, that's it. So we will leave you guys with a song, but right before that, we are going to give you guys the ironic blessing, and Cain will do this with the most authority that we have, and before we put on our last song, I guess we will say our goodbyes, and we will say we love you guys. We love you guys very, very much. Thank you to everybody who listens in on this. Thank you to everybody who seeks the creator and seeks his son and seeks the way forward, and, you know, th this is a great life. This is a wonderful life. It is a beautiful life, and you will find the clarity and the peace that you're looking for, but it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. There's two, there's two parts of a covenant. We have to do what we are supposed to do, and that is to keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator, and then He will be our Elohim, and we will be His people. All right, Kate, take us away. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is how you barak the Shalom Yashrael. Say to them, Yahuwah barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor uh, up to you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Thus they shall put my name on the children of Yisrael and I myself shall barak them. Thank you, kid. All right, guys. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May his light shine upon you. Guys, may you forever find favor in his eyes and may you keep with the Torah and the Messiah, Yahushua's, the faith in him forever. Much love to you.
Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Much love. Love you guys.